Hello everyone, it is Joe here from OmniPoke, the channel that brings you guys everything Pokemon. Today we're looking at another team up deck analysis. This time it's going to be based around Zapdos, one of the most promising and aggressive non GXs that we gain from the set. So let's jump into the basic concept. Uh, Zapdos has the first impression style attack where it just does 10 base damage but 70 more if it jumps into the active position that turn for just a single lightning energy. This is really insane early game pressure. You're going to be knocking out uh, basics that are trying to evolve up very early and start taking prizes. Or you're going to be doing good damage to, you know, GX Pokemon like GX basics. You can be two-shotting those quite easily, especially with the likes of Choice Band, Shrine, and uh, Electro Powers on your side. So Zapdos can actually push even higher numbers when it needs to, thanks to those additions that you can grab quite easily. Thanks to the likes of Jirachi and Volkner, that's a big part of this engine. The Jirachi, when it's active, allows you to look at the top five cards of your deck, find a trainer there and put it straight into your hand, and then the Jirachi goes to sleep. But the amount of Guzma and Switch cards, as well as the skateboards that we have on the list, really mitigates that sort of negative effect and just helps us dig a lot quicker into these combo pieces to make sure that we can spam Zapdos attacks in the early game to take big, uh, you know, big prizes off the board and uh, really target down the opponent's basics and stop them evolving. And then we can move into a more late game with a few other attackers that we have available. Uh, that's the best thing about Zapdos, really. We're going to see all sorts of builds based around this guy. There's going to be Pikachu Zekrom based builds. There's going to be Jolteon builds. Today's build is going to be a shrine based one. So there's all sorts of different lists that you can build around this card because it doesn't take up much space. The Zapdos just requires one energy. Volkner can find those energies so you don't need to play a high count. And it just is so early and aggressive that we can have all sorts of decks being built just thanks to this guy as the early game pressure and you can build towards other stuff in the background thanks to this Jirachi engine that we have. So here, here are the Pokemon. Four copies of that Jirachi as I mentioned. It has that one retreat so we can uh, use those escape boards on him quite nicely. There's the Zapdos, 110 hit points and it has that only the one attack. Just 10 and 70 more if it came active that turn. It also has a nice resistance to fighting, which I've covered up by my own numbers there. And it also has a 2 retreat cost, so if we are very much stuck, we can escape board and retreat with that 1 energy that we attach to attack with, with the Zapdos. So that's something to bear in mind. Um, then we're going to have 2 copies of Blitzel and a 1-1 one, one split of the Zeb Strikers. We get a new Zeb Striker from this set, which does 30 plus 90 more if you evolve the Zeb Striker this turn. And that's similar to a Lucario GX's. Uh, first attack and uh, the difference being here of course that we have electro powers to burst this damage up even higher from 120 you can go choice band electro powers and get some big one hit knockouts it's also quite nice in mirror matches because it has that awkward 120 hit points so it forces two electro powers or essentially forces a gust from the opponent we also have that nice sprint zeb striker to fall back on i think this is really important seeing as though the rest of our deck is quite heavily focused on basic abilities that can be shut off by a low and muck which is going to be pretty typical in Zoroark decks going forward. I mean, they're already in there thanks to the likes of Gramble and um, Malamar decks. So it's already good to have a Zeb Striker in here to cover ourselves from some ability lock and give us an extra sort of backup engine to dig deeper into our deck. From there, we're going to have one GX in the deck, which is Tapu Koko. It has the Aero Trail ability, so you can move lots of energies that you've put onto your board onto him all at once and get attacks out of nowhere. Sky High Claws has that nice 130 base output and we have, you know, the choice bands and the powers to go even higher for one shots. And that Tapu Thunder GX attack is going to be, you know, the main reason why I put him in here. We currently don't have a GX attack available and this opens up that option to take some huge knockouts on some, you know, stage two stuff that has a lot of energies committed to them, uh, like Gardevoir. It can also knock out things like these tag teams that love having lots of energies on them. It means that Celebi Venusaur and Pikachu Zekrom have to be very concerned about the amount of energy they start committing to themselves because the Tapu Koko can come in and swing and take a big knockout and that would be so good for us on the prize race. The one Tapu Koko Prism Star makes that happen all that more often uh, because you can simply put him from the bench straight into your loss zone and you get to choose two of your other bench Pokemon and attach a lightning energy to each of them. This means that we can use our Zeb Striker. We can burst that out as well. Even though its attack cost is lightning colorless, we can get that all in one turn. And the same thing for the Tapu Coco GX. We can use the Prism to then get the energies on board for the Coco to then steal them all and put Aerotrail into the active. Um, from there, we're going to have a Nihiligo. This is played in uh, the successful Japanese list. We are running unit energies in the build, so we can use the Nightcap attack 
uh, when your opponent has exactly two prize cards remaining, which, you know, we can quite easily force, especially if we don't use the Tapu Koko GX in our game. Um, we get to choose one of your opponent's Pokemon's attacks and use it as this attack. Very, very efficient. A basic non-GX that can just steal any attack on your opponent's board for one Psychic is ridiculous value. Um, if we haven't used a Tapu Thunder GX attack in the game, we can steal, you know, big GX attacks if we need to as well. So that's definitely worth noting. I've actually done that against Celebi Venusaurs, which is hilarious and actually got... If you attach the extra energy, you can get the tr uh, Lysander's Trump card effect as well, which is pretty nuts. Uh, speaking of Celebi Venusaur, its second attack is actually quite annoying for the decks that just sit in the active, and Celebi Venusaur is definitely one of those. Uh, confusion and poison is actually really annoying, especially because Venusaur is just trying to tank, and having that chip damage and forcing them to flip coins is really irritating for them. So that's definitely worth noting. And then we have this Absol. It has an ability that says your opponent's basic Pokemon have one more retreat cost. It's a tech card for mirror matches and a few other decks that are going, going to be adding this Jirachi into their uh, decks. Um, it can be really annoying for like tool drop. Some Malamar builds are trying it out. A few different decks are going to try this Jirachi with a skateboard combo and the Absol is a bit of a counter to it, let alone the fact that it's a mirror counter. And I think mirror will be important to keep in check. So I like having this Absol. Bear in mind it does have an attack as well. Uh, for Dark DC, you do 30 plus 30 more for each of your opponent's active Pokemon's retreat cost. And this is actually worth noting, because in mirror matches, if you're using your Nihiligo, you can copy their Absol to knock out their Zapdos, which is something that's come up before already in my testing, so good to bear that in mind. On to the item cards. We are going to be playing one Adventure Bag. I think because we're playing four Volkner in the list, pulling out the Adventure Bag helps us pull out two tools at once, which is extra deck thinning and means we can get that like early choice band if we're up against basic GX decks or get just multiple escape boards rolling, which is great. One copy of Escape Rope. Again, in the early turns, when the opponent only has like one or two bench Pokemon, these ropes can make sure that we're targeting the things that they don't want us to reach on the bench, which is awesome. Switch is going to help us move out of our Zapdos, of course, and move into more Jirachis for even more uses of its ability. Uh, two copies of Rescue Stretcher to recycle, you know, the Zapdos pieces if they start falling, or that Zeb Striker line is obviously very important. Two Ultra Balls to help lower our hand size, actually, for Lilies sometimes, because that's a big part of this deck. And also, it's going to help us get some extra search in for those Zebras. Four Nest Balls to get pretty much everything else in the deck. Four Electro Powers for those big damage-boosting uh, turns where we need to take big knockouts. Three Escape Boards, obvious synergy with the Jirachis, and pretty much anything else for some freedom of movement. And two Copies of Choice Band, again, for damage buffing. The supporters are just going to be, quite simply, four Guzma, four Lily, and four Volkner. The Guzma is, you know, an integral piece here. Really, really good supporter card. I've thought about Palpad just because of how much I want to be using Guzma a lot of the time. It's just so incredible in this deck. You want to have that option all the time. And Lily and Volkner. Obviously, Volkner has insane synergy with, like, grabbing Nest Ball Lightning in the early turns just to guarantee a Zapdos to start swinging. Um... And just help you grab, again, like the Adventure Bag, the Switch cards, stuff like that is really good to guarantee. And uh, the Lily is, again, a nice supporter you can use in the early turns especially. Especially on turn one, it would be great to fill up that hand size. And every now and then, if the hand starts getting low, you can top yourself back up with the Lily. Typically, you're scouting for things. You're actually tutoring with Volkner and Guzma because we have so much natural tutoring with the Jirachi anyway that the Lily is more sort of supplementary. But I like having four copies still just to be on the safe side because we're not playing uh, Lele, of course. And uh, then we're going to play three copies of that Shrine. I like having three. Uh, there are still are going to be lots of Zoroark decks roaming around and the longer this stays in play, the better. Having lots of options to bump Prism Star Stadiums as well is going to be nice for you. And uh, just trying to put Lele's and stuff in your range is going to be really important. So every time you see Shrine, you're pretty much happy. And uh, then the energy is just nine in total, seeing so most of our attackers, well, you know, the, the Zapdos only ever takes one. And we can grab two from the discard pile thanks to our Coco Prism Star for the likes of the Zeb Striker and the Tapu Coco GX. So we have a little bit of nice recycle in there. So I think that's plenty. We only need the units for um, the... Nihiligo in most situations, that's just one attack in general. Uh, you can attack with Jirachi, funnily enough. It has an attack for Metal Colorless to just do 30. And in really random spots, you could, you know, choice band it up and hit things like Gardevoir and uh, a low and Volpix and a low and Ninetales if you really want to for weakness. But I feel like that's definitely going to be something coming up in very niche situations. 
Onto the full list, here's just the overview if you want to see it. Overall, I think this build is obviously the one that is going to play the least GX Pokemon. I think the Tapu Koko is still valuable enough to play. Um, but there are some other options we could be looking into, uh, and we'll get onto those straight away with our tech cards. As I mentioned, this is just going to be one of a handful of builds of Zapdos-based decks. I think there's going to be a separate video itself for a Zapdos Jolteon. This is like the other very popular variant of the Zapdos deck. I actually didn't profile the three evolutions in our set review because they are promos coming out this month, but I'll make sure I do a video about them in the coming week uh, just to get you more in the know about those cards and think about all their combos. But essentially, the Jolteon, as a quick rundown, um, has that Jet Punch as its first attack, but for a, a Lightning Energy, its second attack is just a vanilla 110, and its GX attack is 110, and it doesn't take any damage. Uh, or I don't think it even has effects next turn either as well from attacks the following turn. So it's really, really strong, uh, efficient attacker. And again, with the likes of Electro Power and Choice Band, it can ramp up into knockouts quite easily. Zero Aura is one that I really wish I could play, but because of Shrine, I don't feel like it's that worth it. The Full Voltage GX gives you some nice protection against mill variants, which is actually quite funny. That Thunderclap zone as well means that you're not worried about the likes of Absol in other uh, Zapdos builds and other people trying to play that card. And the Plasma Fists, again, uh, just really easy to take one-hit knockouts with this guy. Much easier to get him powered up if we have the uh, Tapu Koko Prism Star in the deck now as well. So um, I think the deck then becomes... Like, there's going to be different builds of the Zapdos. The Shrine one doesn't really lead towards a Zero Aura. But if we played uh, Aether Paradise and Thunder Mountain, the Zero Aura definitely starts sneaking into that build. So there's going to be different levels of Zapdos list. There's going to be pure Shrine ones like the one I'm showing today. There's going to be like a hybrid that has like a few extra GXs and then Thunder Mountain. There's going to be Jolteon based ones and there's going to be Pikachu Zekrom. So there's like four different layers of where we're going to be going with Zapdos, which is hilarious. Uh, in the middle section here, if we played Rainbow Energies, we could start looking at different attackers like Boswell. Similar to Nihiligo, we have that key turn where we could do even more damage. And again, if you're worried about the likes of Zoroark, this is a nice tech to put in here. And also in some of those more GX-focused Zapdos mirrors, you can take some big knockouts on the likes of Zero Aura, Jolteon, and even Pikachu Zekrom, which is hilarious. Um, these uh, Weavile is pretty nice, again, for the likes of Zoroark and a few other decks out there that are quite ability-focused. We don't mind leading Sneasels because, again, we have so many pivoting options that it's easy to move it and it only has one retreat so it can work with those escape boards. Uh, Mr. Mime, if you're worried about uh, some decks trying to ace a roller bounce against you, some mill variants and even Zoroark to a certain extent. And Roadblock as well is a potential option. There's just so much, so many tech options that you can think about in this deck, to be honest. Pseudo Wudo, uh, limiting your opponent's bench size, trying to make it harder for Zoroark decks to knock out your Zapdos turn by turn. And uh, I've also seen a few of the Japanese lists playing a Mag Cargo engine. Seeing as though we're already playing Zebra, you can just try Ditto Cargo and see how that goes for you. If you were going to incorporate Mag Cargo, we could throw the Kakui in there as well for some extra damage buff and some synergy with Smooth Over. The original build I had of this list actually played Looker's Whistle. No, it didn't. It played Judge's Whistle and Judge. And um, I thought because we were so aggressive that combining it with hand disruption at the same time was a really potent and powerful strategy it could be a nice way to go forward just bear in mind that when you're judging yourself with a zapdos in the active um you need to kind of get lucky to draw into one of your switch cards afterwards so if you're using the judge do it when your jirachi is still active so you could then use that ability to uh hopefully get yourself like a gusting effect the following turn uh, for when you bring in your Zapdos to attack with. That's the only real thing. But in general, the Judge could help out again against stall decks, which is worth noting, and also against um, just anything, trying to build up a big board, any like Stage 2 variants, stuff like that. The Judge will be really annoying, even in Mirror to a certain extent, if you can trap things. Uh, here's the matchup overview. I feel like uh, Pissimi and Coco, definitely an awkward one. Zori Desi Tales. I started off losing every game I played when I was the Zori Desi Tales player. And then I sort of figured out the matchup, actually added in a couple cards. Like I, I added a second counter gain and like a field blower to the Zoro Desi Tails. And then it started to become quite a difficult matchup. I think if you're attacking with a nine tails and getting a Decidueye or two online, sniping their Jirachis and making your damage go far, it can be pretty awkward. So do bear that in mind. I think if you wanted to go even better for that matchup, you could think about things like the Coco GX or the Buzzwell. Um, the... 
Right now, I think the mill variants are very difficult. The likes of Sylveon and Shuckle and those other wall decks will be very hard. Again, Zero Aura, a tech card that's really good for stall, and you really improve those matchups because you can just put five energies on the board all at once, and you're not going to be trapped either because you have much more pivoting with that Zero Aura. So I really do think the Shrine is like such a powerful card that it's made me not play Zero Aura, but the Zero Aura can definitely help out quite a handful of matchups, to be fair. Um, Meganium Swampert Ninja was also one of these Japanese decks that popped up specifically to counter Zapdos, so that's always going to be a bad matchup for you. And finally, Celebi and Venusaur. I think because we are actually a Shrine build, we have more of a chance than some of the other builds that will also play Aether Paradise, because then it just means it stays in play the whole game, and that's really awkward. But uh, Shrine gives us somewhat of a chance. We have to try and accumulate some Electro Powers for some big Coco GX knockouts and stuff like that here and there. But it is not going to be easy. And the fact is they have those crushing and enhanced hammers that they can spam. And if they're able to reload them with their GX attack, they sometimes will be able to run you out of resources. Which is something to bear in mind. Because they are chomping through Zapdos turn by turn with their second attack a lot of the time. So that's definitely a concern in my opinion. For the closing thoughts, I've talked about like a handful of the builds. But I'll try and just talk about this one. The Shrine build is very versatile. We already have a handful of attackers. We can really... Like, the opponent always has to be in fear of whatever they're attacking with just getting bursted for a big knockout because we have the likes of the Zebra and the Tapu Koko GX that can come out of nowhere. We have the big Nihiligo turn that we can try and force. And we just have Zapdos in general with, like, however many Electro Powers we spam that turn. We could reach big knockouts. And I think the fact that this deck is so fast um, just means it's always going to be well-placed and strong in the format. I don't think this is ever going to be... Um, like lower than tier 2, like all of the Zapdos decks collectively, just because of how aggressive the deck is and this nice Jirachi engine supporting it means that you're also going to be very consistent. So I do foresee this deck and its different variations all being very strong. wanted to start off with the Shrine one because I thought it was quite a simple shell and it's one of the ones that did the best in the uh, Japanese tournament in Niigata or Niigata. I can't remember how to pronounce it. Uh, but I've done my best at least. And uh, yeah, I thought that would be the best baseline to go for. But keep an eye out on the channel for the Pikachu Zekrom coming, I think, this weekend, possibly. Um, and then the other Zapdos builds. I think I'll wait till PTCGO is out for those other ones and start getting some gameplay in there because I'm sure people will want to see gameplay of Zapdos as well. So that's it from me, guys. Thank you so much for watching today's Team Up deck. See you tomorrow for another one. Cheers.